Welcome to Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks. This is March 8th, and I have a fun project from the Creative Memories blog that we're going to be putting together. This is a layout um, that Creative Memories had in the blog for the um, polar um, the polar lights. I'm, I'm, I'm having that moment where I'm trying to remember, but I think it's polar lights. Um, yeah, polar lights collection. That moment when you're just like, oh, I think I'm saying the wrong word. Um, but the handout is on my blog if you want to get it. I've just copied and pasted the directions from the Creative Memories blog project. I do have a little bit of a note in there about cutting the triangles for this. Um, there was maybe a little bit of, I don't want to say confusion, but um, cutting things on the diagonal, I have learned over time, you got to like double and triple and quadruple check how you're explaining it. Um, and so I've got a couple little notes on there. And as we put it together, I think it'll become a little more apparent when you're putting it together, how to make it work. It's not hard. You just have to kind of like visually as you're assembling your page, just look at it and you'll see how those triangles are going to split and um, create the design for the paper. So as I mentioned on my Facebook page, I'm going to be using the Serene Waters collection for this. If you need the handout, um, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you'll be able to see this. Um, the first comment is a link to my blog that has the handout. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description below um, the link to the blog with the, the handout that you can download. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my desktop and we'll get started. So this is a trimmer only layout, which is fantastic because we don't need anything but just our trimmer. And of course your paper and your photos and all that fun stuff. So you need your adhesive and all that, but we're not gonna be using any other tools other than our trimmer. So if we look at their layout, their descript the, um, the blog layout here, we're going to start with the background page. They use um, this darker tonal blue that has a little bit of the, they call twinkling lights paper from the polar lights collection. And then you're going to need um, some paper that's going to become your strips on the side. And then you'll need, they use three different patterns of paper. It's actually, they, they actually use two strips of paper. One strip is going to be, they use the snow. So where you see the blue, that is from one two by um, 12 piece uh, strip of paper. The other one that they cut is what they call the Northern Lights paper. And the opposite side of the Northern Lights paper is this green stripish, tealish green stripish. So um, they are showing three different patterns. You could use four, you could use two. Obviously you're gonna need at least two to show some contrast, um, but they are only using three. And I think I'm gonna be doing something similar just using the three patterns. I like the consistency of the blue in here and I think that's gonna work well. So I will show you what I'm working with. I'm using, like I said, serene waters. And I had these photos of my middle child, um, some swim lessons from 10 years ago. This was summer of 2013. And these photos have been through the ringer. Um, they are beat up. You can't even tell. It's almost like they've been run over by my car, but they weren't that. What happened is I was given to these by their swim instructor and they kind of just got thrown in my car. I wasn't very um, careful with them. And they just have over time just kind of been tossed about. Um, you know, I'm not a very neat person in my car. So anyway, these desperately need to be put on pages before they finally um, accidentally get thrown away or something crazy. So I'm excited to get these on to a page. And so as I was looking through Serene Waters, I came across this paper that has all the swirling fish on it. There's all these wonderful little swirling fish. And I thought how perfect for a background paper for these fishy photos of the swim lessons. I thought that was gonna be fantastic. So then I liked, it's got the blues, it's got a little bit of that um, kind of a uh, sea green in there and um, the, the orange is a nice pop too. So what I've done is I've gone back into the Serene Waters collection. I wanted a mat. If you have three photos, um, you'll be able to come in here with your three photos. The measurements that they give you here in the, the directions, the center section, you would use a four by six mat. So if you want a peekaboo pocket, something to add some more photos, this is going to be a great spot to do this. I could peekaboo pocket this if I had more photos, um, either putting a photo here, leaving it as the title spot, but then that would flip up and at least show two more spots. Now I only have the two photos, so that's why this layout was just going to be perfect. But here's gonna be kind of what my center area is gonna look like. I needed something to come here off the sides. 
And what I'm going to be using is I'm actually going to be using, um, I have this scrap of, it has kind of that um, water, makes me kind of think of a pool, uh, pool water. The opposite side is this really pretty, um, the multicolor mosaic. So I'm going to be using um, the opposite side. Uh, I'm going to be using these multi, the mosaic tiles on my outer strips. Um, I see a question about um, the, um, the, all these papers are from Serene Waters. The only one that's not is I'm using a piece of uh, paprika uh, cardstock, which just kind of coordinates. So whatever, I'm using some orange cardstock. It's paprika from one of the cardstock buffets that we had a while ago. So I will be using the opposite side to this to be doing my outer edges. At least that's the plan. Now, if I put it together and I don't like it, I'll make some adjustments. Um, and then I will be cutting some of the triangles from this color. And then I am also going to be cutting some triangles from this piece of paper. So I'll be cutting a strip. And the opposite side here, I also liked that. So the, my triangles are all going to be cut with these three papers. Well, there's, there's two papers. And I'll be using three sides, right? and then my outer strips will be cut from this pattern. So I really only need these two pieces of paper. When I fanned things out to show you guys the different patterns I was using, I grabbed some extra pieces, but I don't need those. I am gonna be using the double sides, both sides of these papers. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is they have us cutting strips two inches wide by 12 inches long, and then cutting those strips in half. So truthfully, what we are doing is we are going to be cutting um, triangles. We're going to be cutting two by six rectangles and then cutting those on the diagonal. So however you can come up with a two by six piece of paper is going to be perfect. You could cut it out of a mat. I could have gone through my mats for Serene Waters and looked for ones, like I could have used this one. I could have trimmed that down. I could get easily get two two by six um, triangles out of a mat. So look in unusual places that maybe, you know, you if you're not using your mats, um, you had a couple left over that you wanna just go ahead and use up your scraps. Anywhere that you can get a two by six rectangle from, you'll be able to start putting this um, layout together. So I am gonna go ahead, this isn't gonna take very long. Once you get the hang of how you make the rectangles, this layout comes together very, very quickly. We cut the rectangles, we cut them on the diagonal, and we'll be able to just kind of assemble from there. The one thing I wanna mention, this particular layout, you can see here we have horizontal photos. It, this one would be easy. You can just see there, flip it to the side, and you've got room for verticals. So always remember that you can rotate your layouts, especially this one when we're working with our papers um, are pretty, you know, they're not too um, directional. My papers here, I, you know, I'm going to be going in that, um, the, just the way they show it here. So if you are turning, rotating it, you might want to think about that when you cut your, um, your rectangles to keep that in mind. Okay. So let's go ahead and start cutting. Um, I'm just going to follow these directions. So I've got my background and I need to cut two half inch strips and I'm going to be cutting those from this paper here, the, um, the mosaic strip. So I'm going to cut this at half inch and I'm going to rotate my mat because I was getting some frayed edges when I was working with it before. So if you're starting to see those frayed edges on the edge of your paper, don't think that your blade is bad. I'm gonna tell you right now, I am pretty certain this blade, oh, I used to have it written on here. Maybe I did up, oh yeah, you can't really tell, but it says November of 2019 is when I put this in there. So it's been around for a while. The caveat for that is I don't cut photos on here. I am just cutting paper. So um, I could probably change it out if I wanted to. I think I did change it out to a new blade just to see if it made that much of a difference. I didn't notice a difference. The biggest difference I always notice is when I change my mat. So if you're starting to see some frayed edges, rotate your mat. There's four sides to this mat. So half inch. Let's 
So there's a half inch, and then I'm gonna do another one. Now I will admit, I'm the type of person, if I don't exactly like how this pattern lined up in here, maybe I'm gonna like this next strip a little bit better. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm going to cut one more. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I like these two strips and I'm gonna to toss that one to the side. I can maybe use it for something else, um, but I like these two strips just happen to line up the patterns lined up a little bit better. So um, that could be a thing to keep in mind depending on how you're doing it. Um, I see a question about what I use to cut photos. I like the personal trimmer because I am the type of person that will slice off little slivers um, to get the crop just right. And I, so I really like the personal trimmer. I just like the guillotine edge. It's nice and smooth. Um, so that's what I prefer. Next up, I've got my background pieces here. I am not going to do any adhering for, um, yet. I like to cut all my pieces and then kind of dry th fit things together to make sure I like how they look. So I'm going to go ahead. Step two, I need to cut my two inch wide pieces of paper but two inch wide strips for my triangles. So I'll cut those at two inches. Um, so I see, yes, I still have the older um, personal trimmer because if it's, it works, right? Um, I think I have a, one of the newer ones around here somewhere, but I just kind of leave it there. Um, haven't had a need to open it yet. So I'm cutting this at six inches. I cut it two inches wide by six inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my rectangles first. So there's those two rectangles. Now I'm gonna come over here. I did not have a scrap of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a full piece. I know from just messing around uh, preparing for today, I want this pattern on the back to be kind of going more horizontal. So I am gonna cut, I'll cut that side up to keep that um, so I know I can see that the pattern I'm cutting it and those the pattern will go horizontal so here we go two inches and I'm going to cut that to six so two by six that's where you need four rectangles that are two by six so that's what I've got. I'm gonna be using two with this water pattern. I'm gonna flip this one over and cut this on the diagonal and then this one will be cut on the diagonal. All right, so one thing I want you to think about, and if you have your handout, I could have written, I should have written these on here. I it was kind of, I don't know, distracted when I put the handout together a little bit. One thing I wanted to note that you can do is, um, let me find, well, I guess, the blue would have been fine. Um, when we put these triangles together, I want you to think that, see this triangle and this triangle, this green one and that green one were cut from the same piece. So if we come down here and we mark one and one, right? They cut a, they cut a piece of paper from upper right to lower left, and then they separated the two pieces. If we look at the Northern Lights paper in the upper um, left-hand corner, we'll mark that as number two, and they separated it down over here to number one, or to, uh, to the lower right, so I'm gonna mark number two. I can see here that this blue triangle on this side matches, it can come right over here to this side. That angled piece disappears behind the Northern Lights, but these were cut from the same piece. So I'm gonna mark three and three, and the same thing for this upper one, four and four. Now, I know I'm gonna leave these two pieces, I'm gonna consider pieces three and four, three and four. I'm gonna set those aside for the moment because I wanna talk, we're gonna be cutting, we'll cut number one first, which is represents the green striped. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and um, it doesn't really matter too much. We'll be cutting both of these the same way, but I want to just highlight when we cut this and let me show you on the back. We need to have the fat piece at the top, which means we're going to start at the upper right and cut to the lower left. We're going to cut it this direction. All right. So this is for pieces three and four. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. It's one and two. Numbers one, number two. All right. We're going to cut num triangles number one and number two from the upper right to the lower left. Triangles three and four, we look at them, the fat piece is, um, is at the bottom. So we wanna go ahead and we're gonna start from the upper right, or excuse me, upper left and cut to the lower right. This is numbers three, number, four. All right. So I'm sorry if you guys are having difficulty with the, um, with the, um, the record the, the Facebook live, hopefully um, I'm recording this separate. So you may be able to watch it on YouTube later. If it's, if it's work, if it's not, the um, audio is not working good. Okay. So now that we've talked a little bit about these, I want you guys to let me cut them first just to make sure that I don't have something messed up. All right, so numbers one and number two are these two pieces. Cut them with the side of the pattern you want showing up. So I wanna see this blue and teal stripe and I wanna see this um, other design here on the back. So I'm gonna cut these upper right to lower left. Upper right to lower left. I'm double checking. Yep, I should be good. If you need to, sometimes with these, it's easier to start in the middle and work your way out. There's one triangle or one set, and I'm gonna do the same. Starting in my upper right to the lower left. I didn't get, like I said, I said this before, I'm cutting on a, um, a folding table and it's gives in the middle. So sometimes, okay, so there's those pieces. So now if we just take a quick peek over here, right, we can pretend we're starting to assemble this. I'm going to move that cardstock out of the way. I can imagine that I've got my borders or these edges pieces. And this is me just putting them in place and confirming that I've got, yep, you can see how those line up in there. So now what I need to do is grab my trimmer. These are pieces three and four. They represent the blue snowflake paper. And I need to cut those following this guide. I'm cutting from the upper left to the lower right. Upper left to the lower right. Upper left to the lower right. Now these pieces are gonna actually, they go under. Okay. 
And my paper is largely non-directional, um, so I can just you know get these put on here. However, if you have directional paper, you'll definitely want to make sure you separate them as pairs. So there, I think that looks pretty good. Obviously, I mean, I'm just dry fitting. This is my chance here. Do I, do, do I like the contrast? Do I like my outside pieces here? Do I need to change something? I think it's going to be fine. I can see um, on the video, I don't quite see as much separation in the pattern as I do in person. So um, when you're in person, there is a nice contrast between the patterns. So we've got those done. Um, the next... Uh, piece that we need to do is step number three. So they wanted us to crop the photos to five and three quarters wide by three and a half tall. And then you mat with two six by three and three quarter inch pieces. So I need to cut my mats. I didn't have any scraps. Um, I am using paprika cardstock, which is from the cardstock buffet. I will admit I was not a huge fan of our orange um, that we had. We've replaced it with pumpkin which is a really pretty color, but wasn't quite the right color for this. I had this paprika. I was any orange that came out as part of our cardstock buffet. I was all over grabbing multiple packs of it. So this is paprika. As I mentioned, I can't remember when it came out. Um, it's been a while since we had it. We had a pretty marmalade color that came out last summer when we released, um, when they came out with, uh, the, um, serene waters, but it's a little bit more of a, um, it was a little bit bolder of a color and I like the paprika. So I'm cutting this to three and three quarter inch wide and then I'll cut it in half and I'll get those six by three and three quarter inch. Well, if I come all the way to three and three quarter, I was at two and three quarters. I need three and three quarters. And I'll trim this to six. I have already pre-cut my photos. So these should fit on there nicely. They do. I love that pop of orange. I think that's what I love about Serene Waters. I love the blue and the orange together. I think that is just such a great. And then this will go in the middle. The six, they just butt up right next to each other. So that's going to be my layout. And then um, this is a journal box. You can see here. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to worry too much about journaling. I might draw um, mostly just um, uh, put a little uh, date of the swim, the name of the swim school and um, a date. And I'm going to come in probably out of orange. I'm going to um, use my, uh, my die cut letters. I have the, um, the little... Uh, die cut letters that I'll use and I'll do something about swim lessons. Um, so let me go ahead. I'm going to actually just start putting this together. This, I mean, it's, this one came together really quick. So let me just start assembling. I'm going to as assemble from the outside or in obviously, because that's just going to make it easier. Putting these strips on the outside edge. My kids, um, we lived in Arizona, so we pretty much taught the kids how to swim in our backyard pool. But when they would go to visit my parents in Iowa, my mom used to work with somebody who had a beautiful, beautiful pool in their backyard and they did swim lessons. Um, they had a little swim school. So my kids would go to see grandma and grandpa and then do a week of swim lessons. And it was fun for them. I gave them something to do with grandma and grandpa. Sometimes, as you know, that can how to, how to occupy your time when you go to spend a week or two with grandma and grandpa can be help them do something fun, get their energy out. So I'm going to use the silicone mat. I'm going to uh, be putting on some adhesive here and I don't want to get it on my, my table. I am making sure to get a good amount of adhesive on that triangle end. 
so that it won't lift. This piece is actually gonna be covered up by the other triangle, but just helps. And just adhere these on. So what collections are you guys using? Do you, um, do you have ones that you're working on now or do you think you're gonna be working on later? You guys are always so good about sharing your layouts with the different collections. I think it's fun to see what you guys create. Um, if you do put together a layout and you wanna share it, you can share it in the, uh, um, my Facebook group, Scrapbooking with Megan. You can also share it in with the Ideas and Inspiration group. In fact, I'm streaming into that group for the first time this today. So welcome if you're joining from that group. And we'll go ahead and get these put on the other side. I'm just butting them up right next to it, right next to that strip. So not only is this weekend the start of daylight saving time, which I'm super excited about, as I mentioned earlier, love that extra bit of daylight at the end of the day or the perception of extra daylight. It's not, um, it just means that Cody can stay outside playing longer, which he does. He loves to go out and play. We're in the thick of spring sports have started. Cody's playing lacrosse and little league. My March, March and April and May's calendar is a little overwhelming. I am very thankful that my husband is able to do a lot of the running around with that. This last piece will go on and then we'll have all of those put in. My college age son is coming home this weekend. It's spring break for Washington state. So I'm excited to see him. He came home for president's day weekend, but I had a scrapbooking retreat that weekend. So I wasn't able to see him. So I'm excited to see him here. This, but this paper do, does have um, a cute little thing on the back. I wasn't so um, worried about it. I did write it down if I wanted to put um, some other things on there. Yeah, these poor photos. I think they were in a glove box. They were in a purse. They were in, I don't know. They are just beat up. All right, so there we go. Next is gonna be just putting these on there. We want these three elements to be all right next to each other. They're gonna butt up right next to each other. You can use your mat to help with spacing. I think that's gonna be about where I want them. I see somebody's using, Julie's using Winter Frolic. So I see, um, Joanne's asking about lacrosse. So um, I have only done, Cody is just starting to play lacrosse. And um, so I haven't done a whole lot of pages. I think I'm gonna end up being the team photographer. So I will have way more pictures. Uh, he did a recreational kind of lacrosse clinic in the fall, had one little scrimmage. I did do a layout for that and I will share it. Um, I think I ended up actually um, using, um, I used, uh, oh, Woodland Whimsy, um, partly because I was mostly going off colors in the photos and there was a lot of green, of course, and um, a little bit of kind of that bright orangey red color that worked well. I will share that layout. 
Um, sometimes with some of the sports that we don't have um, details and elements for, I really just rely on the the, the um, photos. So one of the things that I would recommend doing if you're especially working with a sport that you may not have those things for any other activity is to take some detail photos. Um, you know, grab just some picture of the, the sticks or the whatever laying around or whatever elements that they do, you know, just to help yourself with some um, other detail um things that you can add to your, um, your scrapbook. So those would be some great ways to do that. So here's my, my layout for today off based on that blog post. You can see it came together really well. I'm going to have to do some add in some different elements here. I will, um, punch or get a title made. I got to figure out what it's going to say. And I do have some stickers that I can work with that maybe if I want to play a little bit more on the fish theme that's in here. Um, so I'll, I'll figure that out, but I really like it for just a single, I mean, I just had those two photos and I think it worked out really, really well. Something cute to go in their album, um, as commemorating that the swim um, swim lessons. I asked them last night if they remembered this at all and vaguely, I mean, they kind of remembered it was in somebody's backyard and I had to remind them that it was at grandma and grandpa's. It was in Iowa. It wasn't in Arizona. Um, but they kind of remembered the, it was, it was weird because there was grass all around the pool, right? They have a nice in-ground pool, but there's grass all around it, which is not what you see in Arizona. In Arizona, our pools are usually surrounded by rock and things like that. You don't usually have grass right up to your pool. So, um, but I have the different elements to work with. I will punch some letters probably out of this nice orange, carry some orange into here and I'll get that done and post the final image. If you wanted to come in with some additional details, you certainly could. You've got a little bit of space here. If you really wanted to punch um, a border or come in with a little bit, maybe a border detail across just your mat, it depends on how, what you're doing here in the middle. Remember that you can peekaboo pocket this one for sure. It is a four by six and you can easily add the peekaboo pocket. This whole thing, is six inches wide. If you really needed to add more photos, you could come in with a um, six by 12 peekaboo pocket. It would need to extend a little bit more down all the way top to bottom, but you could definitely do that. Also remember you can turn this layout sideways and you could put in some vertical images. So that would actually make a really nice um, two page spread all the way across. Just repeat those same cuts to get those additional pieces. So, all right. So that wraps up the layout portion of today's um, Scrapbook Live. Um, for some quick announcements, I mentioned it at the beginning of, and it wasn't under the recording part, um, but we um, this weekend is the um, Creative Memories virtual crop. So there'll be four sketches that we'll post to the Creative Memories blog. That will come out on Friday at 5 p.m. Central, which is 3 p.m. Pacific, or if you're on the East Coast, which I know many of you are, that's 6 p.m. East Coast time. And the, all four of those um, sketches will come to the Creative Memories blog. So make sure you subscribe to the Creative Memories blog. And you're also going to start getting all of the notifications when they put out these great projects, right? So when you see a message from the Creative Memories blog, I would recommend take a peek at it and see what they've got going on there. Lots of great resources. But that um, the blog post for the virtual crop, if you scroll down through it, you will see an option to download a printable PDF. So print that PDF. It's going to have everything you need for the virtual crop, including those measurements, which makes it really easy to start putting things together. And of course, join the Facebook group for the virtual crop because you're going to start seeing all of these ideas roll in. And it's really fun to see what collections people are using and how are they using those collections. Are there's, You'll see a lot of people starting to think outside the box and mix and match. And that's really fun with the collection or to see as part of the virtual crop. Um, the other thing on Friday, it's a preview Friday, meaning, uh, well, it should be, I'm pretty certain that on, um, next week, we are going to see a new, um, some new products launch on Monday, which kind of wraps us up. This is the final week of free shipping. So if you've got an order, a wish list that you want to save that shipping on, this is a great time to go ahead and place it. Um, Orders of $80 or more within the U.S. are getting free shipping. So um, there is options if you're in Canada and in Australia for free shipping, but those price points are different. I'm not 100% sure what they are, um, but go to Creative Memories website and you'll see details. That is available through um, Friday at noon Pacific time, um, 12 p.m. Central. 
So, and make sure when you're doing that, when you're shopping online with cream members, you are supporting an advisor. So I'd love for you to shop with me, but just make sure you're shopping with somebody. Um, I can tell you as an advisor, I just, it's wonderful to get that email to say that somebody has shopped with me on my um, creative memories link. So make sure you're supporting an advisor when you do that. So we've got the virtual crop, the free shipping preview Fridays coming. So like I said, after 10 o'clock on, um, in the morning on Friday, I should know what's going to be launched for next week. And then, um, next week is power hour on Tuesday, Thursday next week is going to be the um, national scrapbook day project workshop. It's a free workshop. Go to meganintessa.com and you'll see how to sign up for that. And then at the end of the month, we have cards. And I needed to show you, I hopefully you guys saw them. I have the card designs all done and they're super, super cute. All sorts of things we're going to be putting together. So, um, there's 12 of them total. We'll be using the project recipe kit to make those. Um, Tessa will have a cute, uh, layout to go with the, what is left over that we don't use for the cards. So you need a project recipe kit, a blank card kit and a set of the NSD embellishments. So, all right, guys, I think that's all I have to share with you today. We will have, um, obviously next week we'll get together again. I'm not sure what the project's going to be yet, but we will put together something fun and I hope everybody enjoys the virtual crop and I will look, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys create. So make sure you're sharing those projects. If you want to share what you created today, you can do so um, in my um, scrapbooking with Megan group. You can share it in the ideas and inspiration group. That's the group I share with Tessa. Um, I would just love to see it. So thanks guys so much for joining me. I will see you soon.